Good morning and welcome to Little by Little, a short time in God's Word. Turn with me once again to Matthew chapter 14. At that time Herod the Tetrarch heard about the fame of Jesus and he said to his servants, This is John the Baptist. He has been raised from the dead. That is why these miraculous powers are at work in him. For Herod had seized John and bound him and put him in prison for the sake of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because John had been saying to him, It is not lawful for you to have her. And though he wanted to put him to death, he feared the people because they held him to be a prophet. But when Herod's birthday came, the daughter of Herodias danced before the company and pleased Herod, so that he promised with an oath to give her whatever she might ask. Prompted by her mother, she said, Give me the head of John the Baptist on a platter. And the king was sorry because of his oaths and his guests, he commanded it to be given. He sent, and John was beheaded in the prison, and his head was brought on a platter and given to the girl, and she brought it to her mother. And his disciples came and took the body and buried it, and they went and told Jesus. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a desolate place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion on them and healed their sick. Now when it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a desolate place. The day is now over. Send the crowds away to go into the villages and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. And they said to him, We have only five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass, and taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and said a blessing. And he broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. And they all ate and were satisfied. And they took up 12 baskets full of the broken pieces left over. And those who ate were about 5,000 men besides women and children. Immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But the boat by this time was a long way from the land, beaten by the waves, for the wind was against them. And in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them, walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, It is a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Take heart, it is I. And Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him, saying to him, O you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. And when they had crossed over, they came to the land at Gennesaret. And when the men of that place recognized him, they sent around to all that region and brought to him all who were sick and implored him that they might only touch the fringe of his garment. And as many as touched it were made well. So after the feeding of the 5,000 plus, uh, he has the disciples get in the boat to go to the other side. And he goes to the mountain to pray. Right? Busy day of ministry. He had tried to get away um, after hearing the news of John the Baptist, but the crowds followed. And so now he's getting a chance to do that, to get away, to pray, to be recharged um, by the Lord, by the Father. Um, th that's what we need to do. We, we need to have times where we get recharged in our walk with God and in, our, in and for our lives by getting away, being alone, yes, by yourself, just you and Jesus, crying out to the Father. And he'll strengthen, he will encourage, he will lift you back up uh, and prepare you for what's next. And so the disciples, meanwhile, they're in the boat and things are not going well. And so Jesus sees that. And as the night goes on, he finally goes out to meet them. He doesn't have a boat, he just walks on the water. Uh, when the disciples see that, they're a little freaked out, and they cry out in free fear, and Jesus says, hey, fear not, it's me. And here's where it gets really interesting. Peter says, well, if it's you, tell me to come to you on the water. And Jesus just says, come. And it tells us what Peter walked on the water as he went to Jesus. Simple instruction, simple obedience. No. What happened as soon as he got his eyes off Jesus, he looked around, saw the wind, the waves, um, he started to sink. But he did know the right thing to say, right? Lord, save me. And that's what Jesus is all about. That's his very name. His nature is to save. 
not just from drowning, but to save us from our sins. And so he calls out to Peter, hey, you have little faith. Why did you doubt? Now, maybe you're thinking, wait a minute, Peter had the faith to go out on the first place. How is it little faith? And I don't know. Seems like he had more faith than the other disciples, right? He's the one that actually walked on water for a moment or two. But a faith that is little is a faith that begins to turn away. A faith that looks at circumstances uh, and is overcome by them rather than by keeping their eyes on the Lord. And that was the lesson Jesus wanted for Peter and for the disciples, for you and for me. To keep our eyes on Jesus. Storms will come. Waves will come. Keep trusting. Keep walking. Until next time.